Hello, my brothers and sisters, and welcome to the Covenant of Grace Ministries channel. I'm Pastor Steve Williams, Jr., and we extend the love, the grace, and the peace of Jesus Christ to each of you. We appreciate you investing time to receive God's word by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We are continuing our teaching series on mind games, and we are focused on our second pillar, which is the reprogram and renewal process. Today's message is titled Meditation and Renewal. Meditation and Renewal. In our teaching last time, uh, we were talking about forging a trench of truth. That was our focus. And we introduced the importance of meditating on God's truth or God's word to combat strongholds and create or forge a trench of truth or a new neural pathway, right? We shared that the meditation is all about focusing one's thoughts on the things of God. And it's not about emptying our mind as some people interpret from other cultures, but it's all about filling our minds with God's truth and being deliberate and strategic about what we allow into our minds. So today we're going to build on this principle and share the importance of meditation and how it aids in our renewal process. Our title of scripture is Psalms chapter one, verse two. Um, but for context purposes, we're going to read verses one through three. All right. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never, never wither, and they prosper in all they do. All right. So the word meditate in Psalms 1 and 2 is the same word as ruminate. So some of you are maybe asking, what does ruminate mean? So to illustrate this definition, we're going to give a high level overview of how cows digest their food. So we're going to have a little science class here. OK, just bear with me. So cows, when they eat the grass, they grab they grab a mouthful of grass with their tongues and they chew it some. They don't chew it a whole lot, but they chew it some and then they swallow it. And when the grass is swallowed, it goes through a process where uh, that 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 grass is is being uh, being moved through the cow's four chambered stomach, and it gets regurgitated and rechewed and reswallowed. Okay, the process is done over and over and over again until the grass is fully digested into their system. Now, this process of chewing, swallowing, digesting, and regurgitating is, uh, or rumination, is the exact idea behind the word meditate. It's the exact same idea as that word meditate. So let's look at Psalms 1 and 2 again. It says, but they, the light in the law of the Lord, meditating on it, day and night. So meditation takes a thought which is linked to God's word or, or through a Bible-based truth declaration. And, and we, we spiritually chew on that, that word. We swallow that word. We digest that word. And then we regurgitate it back up to, to our minds. And we start that process over and over and over again. You know, this this meditation is not just casual Bible reading. When we talk about meditation, we mean we repeated we repeatedly take in 
each and every word of that scripture or that Bible-based declaration. We, 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 we take in the meaning and the context. So let's go back to the illustration on rumination, uh, the rumination process for cows. So why do cows ruminate their cud? That's that, that cud is what gets regurgitated back, that grass that's partially, di uh, that's partially digested that gets called back up, they call it cud. Why do cows ruminate on their cud? Because it allows the cows to get the maximum amount of nutrition out of the grass that they're eating. It allows them to get the maximum amount of nutrition out of the grass that they're eating. So let's let's take it back to the spiritual. When we talk about meditating on God's word, why should we meditate on God's truth and God's love and God's great deeds? Because it allows us to get the maximum amount of spiritual nutrition out of our godly thoughts. Now, here's another thing. Another reason that we, we it's important for us to meditate is that it enables us to create a trench of truth. Let's go back to that illustration about that muddy Alaskan road that we talked about. It's obvious from that illustration that one car going down that road does not create a rut. The reason for a physical rut is repetition. And the same is true for mental ruts. Psychologists have proven through their research that the way to get someone to believe a lie is to simply repeat the lie over and over and over again. It, it's it's almost like they they the the, the psychologists call uh, it a glitch that we have a, a glitch in our human psyche. Um, some I know many of us have heard it, it, it on 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 number on a number of occasions that we only use ten percent of our brains or that. Vitamin C can help prevent or cure the common cold. We've heard this being shared to us for quite some time. And because people have said it repeatedly, we believe it. But it isn't true. Okay? It's not true. Spoiler alert. Repetition is the reason for ruts. And here's the thing. Our spiritual enemy has been whispering the same lies to us repeatedly our entire lives, okay? He understands that the more often we think a thought, the more likely we are to believe it, and the more likely it is for the lie to become a rut that we get stuck in. And I want us to step back and self-reflect on this, this principle. Have we noticed Satan's tactics of whispering the same lies to us over and over and over again? Think about it. Satan is really more focused on being repetitive than he is about being creative. So here's a question for us. How do we combat or overcome Satan's lies? How do we replace his lies or his old ruts with, with truth or a new pathway? Here's the answer. The same way he got us to believe a lie through, through repetition is the same way we can replace his lie or his old ruts with truth. We use the same tool, repetition. We're going to write it, we're going to think it, and we're going to confess it until we believe it, church. Speaking our declarations one time will not do 
us any good. Church, we've been told lies over and over and over again. And now we need to tell ourselves the truth over and over and over again as well. We need to meditate on it. We need to chew on it. We need to ruminate over it. We need to swallow and repeat. Meditate, chew, ruminate, swallow, repeat. Um, I read this the other day. Someone said that any idea, any plan or purpose may be placed in the mind by repetition of thought. I'm going to say that again. Any idea, plan or purpose may be placed in the mind by repetition of thought. And repetition is what created the old rut and repetition is what will also create the new trench of truth. Church, we've got to write it. We've got to think it. We've got to confess it until we believe it. All right. Someone may be asking, when is the best time to execute this process of rumination? The answer is as early as possible. Preferably as soon as we wake up in the morning. When we wake up in the morning, writing it, thinking it, confessing it, saying that declaration or saying that 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 God, uh, God's word, speaking God's word over ourselves, that Declaration starting off the day sets the tone for the rest of our day. Okay. What we think about the first thing in the morning has impact on how the rest of those dominoes fall in the in the rest of our day. It has an impact on our thoughts for the remainder of the day. Here's a key point. We should start our day in God's word, forging trenches of truth and finding our declarations. We must start our day in God's word, forging trenches of truth and finding our declarations. We write it, we think it, we confess it, until we believe it, church. Praise God. All right. Let's read Joshua chapter one, verse eight. Scripture says, study this book of instruction continually. Do we see the repetition there? Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. So you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Meditation allows us to be sure to obey God's word, which leads us to success, which leads us to being an overcomer against the lies of the enemy. So some uh, linguist, linguistic uh, experts tell us that uh, a, a new word is invented every 90 minutes. Uh, and I thought about what are some new words that have been made up, you know, recently. Uh, one word that I can think of is Mothis. Mothis, M-O-F-F-I-C-E, which is a short way of saying mobile office. You'd be amazed. Many people operate in offices today. Their their office could be at a coffee shop, or or a student union, or a hotel room. Office. Think about that. Here's another word. Alexing. Alexing is getting information from Alexa. So when we say Alexa, what time does the LSU football game come on? 
we are Alexi. All right. Now we're going to look at a real word that is called automaticity. Automaticity. Automaticity is the ability to do things without thinking about what we're doing. It's when when repetition allows an action to become unconscious and automatic. Okay? Automaticity is the ability to do things without thinking about what we're doing. It's when repetition allows an action to become unconscious and automatic. Think about when we take a shower. We don't think about what body part we're going to clean. No, we get in the shower and we do what we need to do without even having to think about it. And while we're taking our shower and we're cleaning our bodies and one part of our brain is doing the cleaning, the other part of our brain is thinking about the day to come or the day that we just had, right? That's automaticity, all right? Here's another piece to this. Automaticity is also why we keep doing things we don't want to do. That's right. Repetition leads to negative, harmful things becoming automatic. Now, the goal of meditating on God's word and on our declaration is automaticity. We want to fall into this trench of truth, this trench of truth, which will lead us into the right thoughts and the right actions to enable us to prosper and succeed in life. There's a quote that says, watch your thoughts. They become your words. Watch your words. They become your actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. Watch your habits. They become your character. Watch your character. That It becomes your destiny. The journey to our destiny starts with our thoughts. Amen. The journey to our destiny starts with our thoughts. And the right thoughts lead to the right life. And it happens, it can happen automatically. Uh, Zig Ziglar said that repetition is the mother of learning and the father of action. Repetition is the mother of learning and the father of action, would make, which makes it the architect of accomplishment. Amen. I remember when I was in high school and I was studying Spanish. I had a classmate who spoke fluent Spanish and I was trying to impress my classmate. So I tried to talk to her in Spanish. So let me tell you, it was terrible. It was so bad and it took everything in her to keep from to keep her from laughing in my face. She smiled, but she knew I, I was struggling. Uh, and and I remember I realized afterwards that it, instead of me speaking Spanish to her, I was speaking a, a crunchy version of Spanish in English. <laughs> you know, I, I'll call it Spanglish. Right. Spanglish, Spanglish. I was speaking Spanglish to her and she was expecting me to speak Spanish. So day after day, we had these awkward and embarrassing conversations. I guess it was awkward and embarrassing to me, maybe not to her until one day something clicked in me. One day my classmate spoke to me in Spanish and I actually understood her. And I responded in Spanish. You know, suddenly those wires that were crossed were now uncrossed automatically. And uh, I I had some fluency in Spanish. Now, mind you, it only lasted for a short period of time because once I finished 
uh, my Spanish subjectives, uh, my Spanish courses in high school, I didn't keep that repetition going. And when you don't use it, what happens? You lose it, right? But here's the key to the story. With the aid of our transformation agent, the Holy Spirit, we can uncross our wires and we can begin embracing God's truth instead of the enemy's lies. Many of us know what's true, but just because we know the truth doesn't mean that we believe the truth. I'm going to say that again. Just because we know the truth doesn't mean we believe the truth. But here is an encouraging word. Don't give up. Keep moving forward. Write it. Think it. Confess it until we believe it. We are doing this process is rewiring our brain. Okay. And God is going to renew our minds. And, and you'll see one day something's going to click and we will be fluent in God's truth. Automaticity, church. That's the word. Automaticity. We will have changed our thinking. And because we've changed our thinking, it will change our lives. Praise God. I want to read 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. Scripture says, but thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Had a friend who struggled in the past with finances. And his time of, of stress and anxiety really came about during tax season. He had this fear about you know, money and finance, and it'll always result in him trying to manage his stress and anxiety. And on one occasion, he had an instance where he expected to get a refund, but ended up having to owe um, thousands of dollars to the to the government. Um, here's the thing: it wasn't the end of the world, um, but. It felt like it to him, you know, and it's real that 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 anxiety and stress was real to him. But the Lord. Here's the thing. The Lord had provided him the money. He had the money to cover what he owed. And in the grand scheme of the whole picture, of what what went on. That money that he had to pay back didn't have much impact on his life. But here's the thing. The experience brought about a lot of stress and anxiety. So he, as a result of him going through that experience, he began um, reading this book that shared stories about missionaries who died. They were martyrs who died torturous death simply because they were followers of Jesus Christ. And as he read this book, the Bible verses that he remembered as he was working to overcome his anxiety and stress over, over finances crept into his mind. And the declaration that he had said uh, so many times about his finances started echoing in his mind. And he here's the declaration that he shared with me. He says, money is not and never will be a problem for me. My God is an abundant provider who meets every need. Because I am blessed, I will always be a blessing. I will lead the way with irrational generosity because I know it's truly more blessed to give than to receive. Church, my buddy realized in a visceral way what he already knew in his head, that his security is not in the money that he had in his bank account, but in God alone. You know, he shared this with me and I thought this and, and I took this 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 testimony that he had shared with me to heart. And he said, more money doesn't give me more peace. More trust in God's goodness does. And it stayed with me. Um, I've taken his, his message to me, the testimony that he's given 
And I've seen God flood my soul with peace in times where there has been a financial stress or a financial strain on me in, or in my life, you know. That moment that my friend shared with me was a, a new pathway moment, you know. Um, and for him, it created a trench of truth into his thought process regarding money. And now uh, my buddy's anxiety and stress about money has gone away. And his faith is in the source. His faith lies solely on God the Father, Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit, as well as the Holy Scriptures. And he sees his this source, the source of his life, as being way bigger than any of his financial fears. And not only, like I said, did it bless, it was a blessing to him, but he was able to bless me with that testimony. And, it, and it's, it's blessed me as well. Here's what we need to grasp from this beautiful testimony. Our declaration should not be just words on a sheet of paper, church. We must own these words. These Bible-based declarations should be written on our hearts, not just something that we recite with automaticity, but it should be our lifestyle. Church, let's allow God to help us rewire our brains and renew our minds. And this will change our thinking and ultimately it will change our lives. Praise God. All right. We're going to finish up with our homework, which is our thought audit for the week. Okay. We're going to choose a Bible verse or passage that we found from our trench of truth uh, thought out it that we did last time. And look here, this is what we're going to do. We want to take that scripture or that Bible based declaration. And we just want to, we want to take that scripture, I should say, and practice ruminating and meditating on that verse or passage. Okay. We want to look intently at each word, at each phrase, one at a time, because each word that is in that Bible scripture or Bible passage is important to the overall meaning for us, church. Um, and then once you do that, you can either type your scripture into a search engine, search engine and either look for a Bible commentary on that specific verse, or you can also do this. Some of you may have study Bibles that may provide some good commentary on the meaning of the Hebrew or Greek words that are associated with your Bible verse or passage. Here's what I want you to understand. Having this level of personal study will bring new meaning. It'll bring new connotation as you work to apply God's truth into your life. Okay. Now, here's our, our last point. We want to ask God, who is the author of the word, to speak to our hearts about anything specific that he might want us, he want to say to us through the verse or passage that we're, that we're studying, that we're meditating on. Allow what God says to us to be written on our hearts so that it will always be a part of us. And, and we, here's what we need to do. We need to own what has been spoken to us so that we can live and reign in prosperity and peace. Amen. All right. We are finished for today. We appreciate you joining us. A few things to share with you before we close out. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if this message has blessed you, please be a blessing to someone else by, by sharing this message with them and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in deciding who to share today's message with. All right, Pastor Spradley and I appreciate your support through your prayers and your words of encouragement. Um, if you would like to sow 
a, a financial seed into this ministry. We have the information shared on the screen right there. So we appreciate all the ways, different ways that you all support Covenant of Grace Ministries. And we just love you. And we thank you so much. Um, last thing, don't miss out on Thursday as Pastor Spradley is going to be sharing his weekly prophetic soundbite. Don't miss out, church, on another rich dose of God's word to uh, uplift your souls and just give you that word of encouragement to help you through your day. Amen. All right, we're going to close out with our prayer and benediction. Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks today, Lord. We just honor you. We appreciate uh, you being um, omnipresent, present at all times, being omniscient, being all-knowing, having all wisdom, and being omnipotent, having all power and ability, Father. Lord, Holy Spirit, we thank you for this teaching today. Help us to ruminate and meditate on your word. Allow that your word uh, to, 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 to be written on our hearts, Father, and allow automaticity to take place through repetition, Father, so that we can act on your word without even, without even having to think about it, Father. Father, enable us to create those trenches of truth with your word, Lord, and empower us to declare victory over it in Jesus' name. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. May the love of God, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us until we have the blessed opportunity to come together again in Christian fellowship. And all of God's people responded with a prayer of agreement by saying, amen. Love you all. God bless you. And we will see you on next week.